Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Season 1 of The Boys. So The Boys is an Amazon Prime original web series based on a comic book series of the same name which I have yet to read. It was adapted by Eric Kripke who created Supernatural. I have a full playlist on my channel for that show if you're interested. And with the third season currently airing at the moment, I decided to do a retrospective on the series. So The Boys is set in a universe where most super-powered individuals, or in this case, soups as they're called, are recognized as not only superheroes, but as public figures in general. There are seven superheroes known as the Seven who serve and protect the American people, but behind the scenes, they really abuse their powers without the public's acknowledgement. But the show is not actually about them. No, 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 no. You see, they work for a corporation known as Vought, and the show actually focuses on a group of vigilantes led by Billy Butcher, who aim to expose and take down this corporation. And I have to say, the first season is a brilliant debut for such a unique show. So, let's get into it. So first things first, let's take a look at all of the characters, starting off with Billy Butcher and his team, The Boys. So firstly, we have Billy Butcher, the main protagonist, played by Carl Urban. Billy Butcher holds a personal grudge against the leader of the Seven, Homelander, for the rape and murder of his wife Becca, and is hell-bent on revenge. He's meant to be a parody of the Punisher as he is in the comics, except he's way more foul-mouthed. Then you have Huey Campbell, played by Jack Quaid, the son of Dennis Quaid. Huey works at a computer software store, and he decides to join Billy Butcher in order to avenge the death of his girlfriend at the hands of A-Train, another member of the Seven. He's often characterized as being a huge Billy Joel fan, and it's evident in certain episodes of the show that feature Billy Joel's music. Then we have Mother's Milk. Yes, Mother's Milk, aka M.M. So M.M. also decides to join the boys based on his desire for revenge after losing a couple of family members years ago in an incident also caused by a soup. So much so that his father spent years unsuccessfully attempting to sue Vought. Then we have the Frenchman, aka Frenchie. Frenchie is a former partner of Billy's, and he's called into action when Billy and Huey need some assistance with something that I won't get into because that's spoiler territory. He has a history of his own when it comes to soups, which is explored later on the show. He may seem like just comic relief at first, mainly due to his charm and sense of humor, but it's his bond and connection with the next character that I'm going to discuss that really makes him stand out. This person being Kimiko. Kimiko is a mute who stopped speaking at a certain age and uses sign language to communicate. Now if you've watched the show, you know what she can do, but if you haven't, she has, let's just say, a gift if you will. So those were the boys. Now let's move on to the Seven. The first and most notable one being Homelander. Homelander is the leader of the Seven and is meant to epitomize and represent the American way. Yet behind the scenes, he's more of an arrogant narcissist, caring very little about the people he's meant to protect. Then we have Queen Maeve, who is a longtime member of the Seven and one of the more passionate members when it comes to their intended purpose. She was forced into a relationship with Homelander so that the public believes Seven to be a perfect team, which in itself is meant to represent the more conservative side of American politics. Then you have A-Train, the soup responsible for the death of Huey's girlfriend. He considers himself to be the fastest man on Earth and will do whatever it takes to maintain that reputation. Then there's Black Noir, who is basically a parody of Batman, Snake Eyes, and Deathstroke. 
He's largely silent for the majority of the show, and his communication comprises mostly of silent gestures and body language and all that kind of stuff. And more is unraveled about his character throughout the show. There's Translucent, an original character created exclusively for the show. His skin is made from carbon material, which allows him to bend light and become invisible, and almost impenetrable in some instances. Then there's The Deep who is clearly a parody of Aquaman. He has fish-like traits, you know, like gills and stuff like that, and a very personal attachment to sea life. And last but not least, we have Starlight. Starlight is really the only member of the Seven to have genuine, selfless, and benevolent motivations, but things do change a bit for her as the story progresses. And there's some other side characters like Huey's father, who's played by Simon Pegg, Ashley Barrett, sports publicist, played by Colby Minifee, who you may remember as Virginia from Fear the Walking Dead, and Madeline Stilwell, played by Elizabeth Shue a female live-action version of her male comic book counterpart, James Stilwell, the head of the Vought organization. So that's pretty much all the characters. Let's talk about some other stuff. I like the overall style and tone of the show. It's pretty much a dark comedy, it's very unsubtle, and it's filled with plenty of blood and gore, so if that's your thing, well, the show's for you. The show deals with a lot of social and political issues, such as the divided nature of America, the corruption of conservatives and republicans, religious hypocrisy, the commercialization of trends and things like that, much like how major corporations like to capitalize capitalize on things like Pride Month, for example. And the show does a great job in satirizing a lot of these elements as well, considering it's basically a satire of the superhero genre. The production values are some of the best in any TV series, and there's a few action sequences here and there reminiscent of what you see in the MCU. As the beginning of the overarching story throughout the show, this first season works well as a first chapter, and it culminated in an excellent finale with a great clip hanger that had some interesting implications for season 2. So the only problem I have with not only this season of The Boys but just the show in general is the format. You see, each season comprises of 8 episodes and each episode is about an hour long. Personally, I don't like this format. I get that the show is quite expensive, and so I guess they could only afford to do about 8 episodes per season, but because of this, some episodes can meander a bit, and it can affect the overall pace of an entire season. But other than that, everything else was fantastic. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Season 1 of The Boys. Next time we're going to be looking at Season 2. So thank you all for watching guys, please be sure to like the video, share it and subscribe, ring the bell, take care and I'll see you soon.